When you're living abroad, there's always something that reminds you of home. A piece of music, a smell, a familiar voice, a special meal. Taste Like Home is all about learning these family recipes and helping your loved ones recreate them wherever they are. Every week on Taste Like Home, I travel somewhere in Ireland to discover a family recipe. This week, Taste Like Home brings me to the beautiful Carrigan Shore in Tipperary, and I'm looking forward to meeting Ethel. Hi, Ethel, Welcome how are to you? Welcome to with Catherine. <laughs> Thank you. Is this your favourite spot for walking? It is. Toby and myself try to get out every few days. Um, it's a beautiful wood. It's about an hour, oh, and you'll meet nobody. Lovely. Only the trees and the birds. And did you grow up around here? Yes, I did. Only four miles away. I was born on a dairy farm in Mangan, and... Um, I'm now married to a farmer and living here. So this is my local walk. And do you have somebody living abroad then? I do. My sister Una is living abroad for about 28 years. <gasps> oh, I'd say she's sorely missed. She's you know, sorely, sisters? <laughs> sorely missed. Yeah. We're on the phone a lot. We're on Viber. We're on Skype, but it's not the same. And where does she it. live? She lives in Los Angeles. From Mangan to Los Angeles. So I'm going to Los Angeles. You're going. <laughs> so I don't need this anymore. I can get rid of this. Fabulous. Come on. on the bikini. Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> so this week we'll be taking a very special family recipe all the way from Tipperary to Los Angeles in California. Ethel, growing up on a farm in Tipperary, you must have so many food memories. We do. It was a dairy farm, so 90% of our diet came from milk. Um, we ate every possible milk pudding you could think of. So whenever I make baked rice pudding, I take a photograph of it and I vibrate it to Una and she gets a graw. She has to make it that day or whatever. It's a real fond memory of her from childhood. So she misses all the dairy products, but she also misses your Auntie Bernadette's stew. Yes, Una and I were Auntie Bernadette's assistants in our grandmother's grocery shop. It was a grocery shop on a farm and Una and I have many great experiences of working in the shop and meeting with all the customers and if we weren't busy in the shop we were sent out to lift bales onto the back of a trailer there was no downtime I and have memories of that too I know all <laughs> about that yeah we were always very well fed in the shop and from around 12 o'clock on we could smell the, s the smell from dinner coming out from the kitchen and the customers would often comment on it. And it was a very open house. Um, the priest had his breakfast and lunch there most days. The postman had his breakfast there every day. The district nurse stopped in on her break for a cup of tea or coffee. No money changed hands for any of this. And when I was a younger child, about eight cars used to pull in to the farmyard behind the shop on a Sunday morning. They all came in for breakfast. Now, so what do we need for the stew? Okay, we'll start. First, we start with our beef. This is our own beef reared here on the farm. To start, trim the fat from your beef and cut into medium sized cubes. Roughly chop two onions, add some olive oil to a pan, followed by the onions, some crushed garlic, and heat gently until softened. What I do then, Catherine, is I kind of, as that cooks off, I kind of put that into this one or whatever yeah. for going. This is my um, Auntie Bernadette's um, pot. This is the pot she used to really? use. Yes, I feel the weight of it. Oh my goodness. So like she, used to, she used to lean down to an oven on the ground to try and get this out. And it, it would be full, it would be full. Once the onions and garlic have softened, add them to a large casserole dish, add some more oil to the pan and then brown the beef in small batches. Once browned, Add them to the same dish as the onions and garlic. I did, yes. Um, I worked in different jobs. So then I lived in France for a while and I lived in America for a while. I lived in London for a while. I lived in Dublin for a long time as well. But um, So when you're a teenager, away from the farm, you want to get. But then when you're older, it's nice to yeah. live in the countryside. So the carrots actually are as important as the meat in this. And it's best to get carrots with the clay, the clay on. Chop some carrots, clay on. Add to the pan with a dash of oil. Allow to sweat at a low temperature for about 10 minutes. Then add the softened carrots to the casserole dish. I do know when my brother or Una are home from, or breed home from America, they all talk about the beef. And if they were to buy grass-fed beef in California, it would be so expensive. Add red wine, Worcestershire sauce, paprika, and a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. Season with sea salt and black pepper. Add your beef stock, reserving some. Place flour in a small bowl and then gradually add the reserved stock, stirring until completely blended. Add this to the casserole dish and mix through. Finally, place the stew in a preheated oven for about an hour. One final touch is some mushrooms. Trim them and brown in a pan. Once they are cooked, add them to the casserole and return it to the oven for a further 30 minutes. 
Ethel serves Auntie Bernadette's stew with a side of mashed potato. And with her family waiting patiently at the table, I'm dying to have a taste. Hey, okay. hope everybody, I hope you enjoy Auntie Bernadette's stew. Mm. Okay. Joe yeah. Is it your favourite? <laughs> Is it your favourite? Yeah. For pasta? Yeah, probably very fast, but there's nothing wrong with this. Too. <laughs> it looks gorgeous, it smells gorgeous. It tastes yeah. good too. So and definitely very pleased with it. Absolutely perfect. I like it myself. Yeah. And it does taste, it does taste like what she cooked, Daddy, doesn't it? It really does. Do you have a message for Una, Ethel? Well, I thank Una for her assistance in we apprenticing each other in the shop in Grange Motor and for her ongoing friendship and we're great friends and we're always on the phone and we're delighted to send her all of our love in this stew. It's not stew we're sending her, we're sending her our, our love. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah, I hope I can recreate it. <laughs> but she won't say that we came with love. <laughs> not at all, not at all. Auntie Bernadette's stew was truly delicious. I hope I do it justice when I take it to LA. And in particular, I hope that it tastes like home for Una. A-list celebrities aside, when I think of California, I think of fantastic fresh organic produce. And I'm meeting Una and her daughter Roisin at one of their favorites, The Abundant Table. Hi, Catherine. Nice to meet really you. Really nice to meet this you. Hi, Roisin. Yeah, this is Roisin. <laughs> Lovely to meet you. Una, I know you're from a farm, but this is really different than the one I saw at yes. home for you. Yes. Why are we here? Well, because I love my... Ve I'm a cook and I love my vegetables and this is the place to get them. You know, and it's all organic and it actually reminds me of what I grew up with in Tipperary. The tomatoes here are amazing. Really? Yeah, no, they're really good. Uh -huh. Wait till you see them, all the different varieties. Hi guys. Okay, so we have a number of different tomatoes here on the farm. What you're looking at are our grape tomatoes. These are good for salads. Yeah. Um, and then we have here our San Marzano Pisano tomatoes. Oh, they're some of my favorites. Yeah, they're yeah. really good for saucing. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And these are a new variety that we're experimenting with. This is a Japanese black trifle tomato, also of the heirloom variety. Meaty, but very flavorful with um, goes really well with basil and a lot of Italian dishes, even though it's a Japanese tomato. And then our San Marzano Pisano and our uh, Clementine cherry tomatoes. This is the biggest cherry tomato that you could possibly have grown. Uh, and it's sweet and has a really bold flavor, even though it's sweet. What we're trying to do here, you'll notice the drip tape on the bottom. We're a sustainable organic production. So instead yep. of watering our tomatoes or any of our produce uh, with large sprinkler systems, okay. we use a drip tape system that gets water directly to the root of the plant, um, which allows more nutrients to be delivered. Um, yep. And so you end up with a better tasting tomato. We work with an organic compost producer um, out of this area, so they're local. And our compost is really rich with nutrients. It has like coconut husks in it and eggshells. And so the land uh -huh. is really happy yeah. when you keeps replace it. <laughs> keeps it nice and light as well. Yeah. yeah, and then our our customers are really happy because our food tastes so much better. Oh yeah. These little tomatoes, they're, they need a little bit more time, don't they? They're Yeah, these tiny are actually bit. ready. This yellow they tomato, mm-hmm. Mm. So I would have thought those... they needed a bit more ripening, but there you go. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. why you were saying they're mandarin. They're the color of yeah, the mandarin. Yes, right. these are the clementine oh, tomato, yeah. and you can actually just See pull one off and pop it in your mouth if you want uh -huh. to. It really is delicious. Yeah. And because we don't use pesticides, okay. like, you don't have to wash it. Yeah. Yeah. I might go have to there. try one. Roshin, grab one there. And I've seen See? yellow tomatoes, too, you mm -hmm. know, and they're ripe, too, but yeah. I would have only grown up with red tomatoes, probably, you know, but there's so many different colors, oh you know? Yeah. Mm. It's sweet, right? Mm. Mm -hmm. Very good. Mm. They are beautiful. Thanks. Oh, there's nothing that tastes quite as good as something straight from the land. Mm. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. Usually we have three farmers working on our field and they pick the food uh, and then we either sell it in the store or offer it in a CSA subscription. We're also in a lot of the local classrooms and school districts. We deliver food directly to them so that some of the children of farm workers in this community who don't have access to the organic food that their parents are picking have an opportunity to taste it. I'm from Ireland and Una's originally from Ireland and I'm going to cook a special recipe for Una later that her sister gave me. The recipe specifically requires carrots, 
with the dirt still on. Okay, let's go find some of those carrots with the dirt still on. I think our farmer might have pulled a couple up. So if you're not afraid of getting your hands dirty, we can get our not hands at all. Soil. Born no. and reared okay. in dirt, and Found we've Roshin as well oh, for yeah, that yeah. job. Yeah, oh. <laughs> she'll be great about <laughs> orange Roshin. <laughs> all right, and now here we have some of our orange carrots, which I'm just going to loosen from you. When they are growing, they like to put themselves very deep inside there. So we loosen the carrots, and now we can pull them up. All right, go ahead and pick a big bunch. Oh, lovely. You guys oh, need wow. lots of carrots, right? Yeah. So wow. shake that dirt off. And you're right, they're crooked. Yes, yeah. no, which that's is what you yes, want. Exactly. Which is yeah. what we want. We don't yeah. want any perfect carrots. No. We like them to have character. Yes, yes. Ah, Thanks, right. Lola. Yeah, you're so welcome. Good luck with your recipe tonight. I'm sure everybody's going to love it. Oh, they're, yeah. No, they're going to be delicious. Yeah, especially it's, the carrots. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this week, we'll be taking a very special family recipe all the way from Tipperary to Los Angeles in California. Our next stop is one of California's biggest exports. We're off to choose a wine to accompany the meal, this time with an Italian twist. So Catherine, here we are in California. We're going to have our stew tonight. We need some wine with it, right? Hi, Mike. Hi, how are you? Do you have any things that, you know, we could go with this um, stew? Any yeah. red wines? Why don't we start with uh, something from the Italian varietals. It's called Nero Davola. Okay. Uh, this is not a big, big, bold wine. Okay. Um, but it's a great food wine. So it originates in Sicily. But this is grown out of Tracy Hills, California, which is up north. It's nice, but I think it might be a little bit light for a beef stew. Light is a good word, yeah. That's mm -hmm. what I was thinking. We probably, something maybe a little More richer robust. and, yeah. It's, a, it's yeah. like a hearty stew. Yeah. Well, I've got a hearty wine here for All you. All right. Perfect. Thanks, Mike. All righty. So okay. this is a nice, big, bold Napa cab. Yes. Um, and we maybe it might be a little bit too bold. Now, we're pouring it through an aerator. Okay. Uh, so it is rather funny when it comes out. Oh, gosh. You can, yeah, you can see what's happening here. Yeah. And what it does, um, what this does is it actually infuses air, air in while you're going. You can see the bubbles there. Right. So we're going to want to swirl around a little bit like this, and then you can get a nice good aroma huh. and check out the flavors. Okay. Wow. The other one is settling in right now, so we'll see if... Oh, that smells gorgeous. Oh yeah, it does. Very fruity. Mm, kind mm. of black currant tea, yes, would you say? Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We liken this already. Yeah. That's very nice. It's nice. And mm. the way I like it, it takes a few seconds to taste it almost. You know, it's, yeah. you kind of have to let it sit in your mouth. Mm -hmm. But it's, I, I think it's very smooth. It's very yeah. smooth and it's still yeah. got a little bit of acidity, which you kind of need, I think, with the beef stew. Yes. Because, yeah. like we say, it's a rich stew. Yes. Um, you know, I do want to open a bottle of Montepulciano for you, though. Mm. Because that, I think, okay. you know, with all these wines, um, at least what I'm doing is I'm showing you my, my personal favorite out of all my oh, wines. Oh, that would be great. Oh, that would be lovely, Mike. Thank yeah. you. So Montepulciano is the second most grown grape in Italy. Oh. Huh. So it's a little bit earthy, nice um, uh, fruit flavors in it, beautiful finish. Um, and when people come in here, what I tell them is when they drink this wine, they have exactly got my palate. Nice color on it, anyway. Slightly rust colored, isn't it? Yeah. Very floral. Yeah. Oh, that is nice. I like that. It's silky. That is very, very nice. Yeah. Hmm. I know why you're in this business. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, You've got a nose for it. This is the one. Mm -hmm. okay. About your expertise. <laughs> Not right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Una and her family live in an area of Los Angeles called Thousand Oaks. Just a few miles down the road is the world famous Malibu Beach. Beside the beach, Malibu Seafood, one of Una's favorite places to go. And Una's husband, Bill, is going to join us. I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, this is your yeah, place you got coaching? the ocean out here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hey there. <laughs> yeah. This is Catherine. Hi, Hi Bill. How are you? <laughs> I love this place because. I always, it reminds me of Ireland. And when family come over, is this where you bring them, yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, my dad loves this place, yeah. It's, yeah. And then my sister, um, I brought her and her whole family, and they all love it because the food is delicious and the ambience, everything. It's 
Yeah, so I hope you enjoy it. And what too. did you order? Was it the clam chowder? I thought the clam chowder, yeah, which uh, is so creamy. Nice. It has potatoes and clams and oh, some that's, nice that's Irish style. There's potatoes well, in it. Yes, that sounds, yeah. that sounds no, good. I think that's why we all and the yeah. whole family likes the clam chowder too. This must be a dream for you, like having grown up. You know, inland in Ireland, to yes. be just be so close to the sea. No, no, I am. I'm always grateful for the ocean, you know, just uh, to have it so close. And, and then the lovely weather is helps a lot. I'm glad you ate everything on your plate because you need your energy for what's coming next. <laughs> Sounds a bit more than cooking, Bill. <laughs> Sounds like it. <laughs> <most. laughs> Los Angeles is a very active and health conscious place to live. And the great weather lends itself to an outdoor life. Una Son Cormac is really into baseball and she is a little surprise up her sleeve for me. Cormac just called me, my poor son, and their short one player for the baseball game this afternoon. Yeah. So I was like, Catherine, you just get the bat and you swing it and just hopefully get it over the fence and you know what, they'll they'll appreciate you. That's Where do I go? Yeah. In oh, here. So in there, the Darren is waiting for you in there. Hi. Hi, Catherine. <laughs> very nice to meet you. you. I'm Darren. Darren. Yeah. Yes, I am. Are you ready to become a hitter? Uh, no, I'm ready to go home, to be honest. But sure, <laughs> okay, we'll well, before you do, how about we have some fun hitting? <laughs> okay, right. Okay. Darren really has his work cut out for him. I only have 20 minutes of wow. the game. Wow! And even hitting the ball is a massive challenge. Throughout the whole swing. There you go. There you go. That's the best yet! That I'm was so it. happy with that right time I to go I think home. you should probably end on that one. <laughs> Fist bump at that point. That was great. Oh, yeah, I have to do this with you, don't we? Yes, so you ready? And explode. <laughs> <laughs> at the local ballpark, Cormac and his team are just warming up. The balls are flying in pretty fast, and even the experienced players are finding it tough. It all looks a little more daunting. Hi, Hi Cormac. I'm Cormac. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. We'd like you to be on the Dodgers. You want me to be on the Dodgers, right? Did your mum tell you anything about me? Um, she said you're a great cook and you know what you're doing. Let's go in the dugout, come on. Okay, this is what they call the dugout, right? Yeah. So do all the batters go out first? And just uh, stay out? Or no, only, stay in the only normally? two batters are going to be out at a time. One is going to be hitting and one is what they call on deck, which is just so they're ready to hit after the batter uh, puts the ball in play or strikes out. Ah, okay, that makes sense. So the one... Behind the plate is called the catcher. The fella closest to us is yeah. the first baseman. Uh, the one to the right of him is the second baseman. The guy who's throwing the ball, that's the pitcher. So why is he off? He has the, he's after hitting it. Yeah, he yeah, hit it and he got out. So he hit it to the pitcher who fielded it and threw it to the first baseman who tagged first. See, he doesn't even make an effort to swing. You don't, you're not supposed to try, are you? So, you think you're not going to get it. Or when you're hitting, yeah. there's something called strikes and balls. There's a strike zone, which is supposedly from your knees to about right here. Yeah. And it's it's over the plate. So any pitch in th that zone is a strike, whether they swing or don't. But if there's a pitch that's not in that zone, it's called a ball. And if you get four balls, you get to go to first base for free. If it's a bad pitch, you don't want to swing. Oh, that's good, isn't it? Uh, so you're going to be up right now. It's your big shot to hit. Right, Cormac, where do I stand? OK, so usually what you want to do is have your front foot in line with this uh -huh. and your back foot to make it so you're about shoulder width apart. And if it's a bad shot, I don't hit, isn't that right? Isn't that right? Okay, just throw three bad shots and I can go home. Now, are you sure you feel safe there behind me? Are you 100% sure? The vet's not even lying. You might need more than that. If you'd see me play, you'd need more than that. Okay, go easy on me. Go, run! Go! Drum the man! <laughs> I still get sent off. <laughs> Isn't that right? Uh, that was a good hit. Now you probably should have dropped the bat. It's a little easier to run without this. Oh! <laughs> so after a very exciting and challenging day, it's time to head back to Thousand Oaks to teach Una how to recreate her Auntie Bernadette's beef stew. 
Una, I learned the most delicious beef recipe from Ethel, and apparently yes. it's your Auntie Bernadette's. Do you yes. remember growing up? I do. I have great memories. I remember like coming in from school on a Friday evening. I'd probably have to work in the shop that night, but yeah. she would have this delicious beef stew ready for us, and it would come piping out of her oven, and a lovely... Um, few potatoes on the side and so if you can make that for me I'll be very happy <laughs> yes with the stew in the oven the table set and the guests arriving we are just about ready to go and to go with Auntie Bernadette's beef stew I'm making my prosciutto goat's cheese salad with melon strawberry and an avocado dressing to start lay your prosciutto on baking parchment Shape your goat's cheese into a log and place it on top. Cover the cheese generously with chopped chives and sprinkle some brown black pepper to add bite. Use the parchment to help roll into a tight log and refrigerate for three to four hours. For the dressing, add avocado, the juice of an orange, lemon for bite, extra virgin olive oil, thyme, season with salt and pepper, and for a little sweetness, a spoon of honey, then blend. To assemble the salad, tear up some baby green leaves Add melon, strawberries and drizzle with the dressing. Slice the prosciutto and goat's cheese roll into bite-sized pieces and place them on top. Prosciutto, goat's cheese salad with melon, strawberry and an avocado dressing. Oh, well, that looks amazing, doesn't it? The dressing is really good. Oh, this is, this is really so good. Yeah, avocado salsa or avocado dressing and the goat cheese. Do you like goat cheese? Oh. Are you ready for something a bit more hearty now? Yes. yes. Okay. It's getting cold. I'm thinking maybe a stew might be nice. What do you think? Yes, yeah, sounds great. I've got to go and get it now. We need our comfort food. Oh, yes. Yeah. Do you remember no. this recipe? Una? Oh, yeah. Do no, I do. Oh, and, okay. yeah, my aunt would be very happy, you know, yeah. if, oh. to know we were all here That's doing wonderful. this. Yeah. When's the last time you've had this, Una? I have not had it. I want to say I might have been, gosh, 16 years old. Wow. Yeah. And that was, what, five years ago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, this is great. Mm. Mm. That wine is so good, too. It goes perfect with the yeah. stew. Definitely. You think you can uh, recreate it, Una? The pressure is on now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to really. Well, Catherine gave me some good tips. I have to say, but it, I have to say, it tastes exactly like the way my aunt made it. So, oh, it's really, so yeah, that's great. So good. How is everybody doing? Oh, it's great. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Really good. Wonderful. I feel oh I'm 16 goodness. years old again. I have not. I was telling them I have not had this since, and my aunt cooked it when I was 16. You know, so it's. Really? I just can't get over all the tastes and. Just bringing back memories. So it really tastes like yes. home for you. Yeah. No, it's honestly, it's delicious. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna. I'll be a little nervous trying to cook this, but. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you like it, Cormac? Yeah. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. You do? It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's really what do you think, Roisin? Yeah. 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 I'm trying to resist the temptation to lick the cloth. <laughs> thank you so much. Yes, thank you very yes. much. Yes. No. Wonderful. Yeah. And yes. thank you for pulling the carrots with me today, Roshi. <laughs> and thank you, Cormac, for teaching me baseball. Yes. I'll be back next year to do coaching, okay? <laughs> <laughs> You're looking scared. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I was good. <laughs> okay. I was so excited to bring Auntie Bernadette's stew all the way from Tipperary to Los Angeles and I'm thrilled to see everybody enjoy it so much. If you would like to apply for the next series, log on to tastelikehome.ie to register.